Hello, this is Zachary Brooks with World Transplant Athletes. Tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime, and of course, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. As a two-time kidney transplant recipient and frequent participant at local, national, and world games, I always wonder how do other athletes get themselves ready for competitions, but also just stay healthy. Well, for me, there's only one way to find out, and that's to talk to the most inspiring transplant athletes in the world. Today, I have Holly Miyagawa from the United States, California, um, on the show. Holly, it's good to see you. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you, Zach. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I'll, I'll share with everyone. Um, so Holly and I have known each other quite a while. We both participate with Team SoCal, which is Team Southern California. And we also um, are teammates on multiple uh, Team USA uh, games and, and teams together. So Holly and I like her have always been teammates since she's really uh, one of the greatest teammates anyone could have. So it's really cool to have the, the conversation with Holly today. So Holly, what I'd like to do first before we kind of jump into your tips is have people get to know you through a few warm-up questions. So question number one is, which transplant did you have? Uh, I received a kidney uh, from a living donor from my cousin, Darlene. And how long has that been now? Uh, March will be, or March was 21 years. Wow, 21 years. So going strong, no real issues in the years. kidney. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. I've been very, very lucky. And what about Darlene, your cousin? How's she doing? Oh, she's doing great. Yeah, okay. she was doing she was doing great the minute she left the hospital. So a lot of people who are not certain about donation will ask that question. So it's good to know that she's doing just wonderful. So perfect. Yes. So the second question is, if you had to summarize your transplant journey in one word, what would it be? Well, that's where I kind of get, it's tricky for me because um, it's been 21 years. So in the beginning, it was obviously, you know, challenging because I have this new kidney, I have this new appreciation for life, but I'm not sure, you know, I'm still recovering, so to speak, because I was so sick and I was hospitalized, I was on dialysis. So, you know, for the first couple of years, it was definitely challenging. Um, but as I progressed and I realized I can live my life um, it became very rewarding. So hopefully two words is okay. Yeah, totally. So what was, the, <laughs> what was the first word challenging and then rewarding? Challenging yet rewarding. Okay, excellent. So the next question is, what was your, if you can remember that that, that far now or remember, yeah. um, what was your first exercise, what you would call an exercise post transplant? Um, for me, my first exercise was basically walking. Uh, I'm lucky enough to live by the beach. So my goal was to just walk on the beach, walk down to the beach, walk on the sand. Um, and then I think about two and a half, three months later, I played in a volleyball tournament. Whoa, you did. I did. How did you do? Do you remember that tournament? Um, I don't remember how I placed. Uh, I know I was just happy to be in, in it and having fun with my friends. Yeah. Um, obviously it wasn't like a big competition or anything. It was just kind of a locals fun yeah. tournament. Um, it was just, it was just fun to be out there. You know, I was definitely exhausted afterwards. I'm not sure it was the smartest thing, but I did get <laughs> approval from my doctors. They said, do what you can. So I did. Wow. And you got to wow. remember this was 21 years ago. I was much younger. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit for sure. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, you know, I've talked to a lot of athletes and it seems like there's sort of a three month mark for the majority of athletes when they're able to start really doing something they would call some form of exercise or training. So it seems to be the sweet spot in terms of yeah. athletes, especially for someone like you, like you absolutely love moving your body and volleyball. So I'm sure like just getting out again was like, you know, one of the most amazing sensations of your life. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> so then the final warm up question I have for you is which activities and sports do you regularly you know, exercise or participate in? What, what kind of things do you do on a regular basis? Um, well, I still play beach volleyball every weekend that I think is my go-to sport. Um, I have a group of really close girlfriends that I play with and we go down to the beach every weekend and we play Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's a great, 
it's a great workout. We're in the sun, we're exercising. And even during COVID, you know, they closed the beach for a little bit, but for the most part, we played, we played with masks on and it was great. It was just good to get out. Um, other sports, I kind of just, I walk a lot. I kind of jog, um, you know, again, the older I get, it's hard. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, I have, I do some weight training during the week. I like to do a lot of hit intervals to try to get my cardio up. Mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of do what I can. Absolutely. So maybe you can do a shout out for team SoCal's volleyball team. So how, how successful you've been the captain for a long time for team SoCal's volleyball team. How successful has team SoCal's volleyball team been? Um, yes, uh, Team SoCal's volleyball team, um, we've been lucky enough to win gold medal every time we've played. Uh, we will be going for our fourth, fourth, fourth gold medal um, in 2022, or yeah, 2022 in San Diego. Okay. Um, so we've been very lucky, you know, indoor volleyball is, you know, we play a lot of it in California. I grew up with it in high school and college, so um, Hopefully we can continue the tradition. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And so as uh, you know, you, you've been part of you've been you've been on two that part of that winning team as well. So yeah, I've been a part of two, two of the teams. I'm sort of like number seven or number eight, come in, have some wily defense, or maybe a, a point or two, but I'm really happy to participate with Holly. Um, oh yeah. No, it's great. Awesome. Well, that's the one thing, you know, volleyball is a team sport. You know, mm -hmm. yes, I'm the captain, but that doesn't mean, you know, I couldn't do it alone. You know, nope. you need you need uh you need all five players or, yeah. you know, 12 on a team on a roster mm. and you need everybody, you know, it is a team sport and that's what makes it so fun is that you play together, you win together, you lose together. Um, yes. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. That's why I like it. Excellent. So thanks so much for those warm up uh, questions, Holly. So now let's get to the heart of the show, which are the tips, tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes everywhere. So you give me five, like everyone else. And so I like to list the five and go back to the top. You can walk, yep. walk us through those, those tips. So number one, you say hydration and eat healthy are very, very important. Number two, yes. mental awareness, visualize events. I really want to talk about both of those because they're sort of two different ideas and both, both are very important. Uh -huh. um, number three, stretch and warm up. Uh, number four, practice, practice practice okay. I of think I, I think I know what that means and number <laughs> five is sleep and enjoy yourself so let's go back to the top and the tip number one you have for sure. everyone is hydrate and eat healthy so why are those so important for you um well for me hydration is you know is key because as you know as a kidney recipient you have to hydrate your kidney needs water you need to make sure you're always hydrated um, and, you know, as you don't, you start to cramp, you realize what's going on. Um, so that's always been something I've been taught since day one, you know, since I was younger, even pre-transplant, always hydrate, always eat as healthy as you can. Um, I'm finding that, you know, as you get older, you definitely need to focus more on hydration and you really need to eat healthy as best you can, get as much protein. And um, I think that will help you in the long run. Yeah, I, I agree with this one a lot. And this is um, what I would classify as like relearning, like you have to relearn this lesson. I mean, I hydrate, I yes. drink massive amounts of fluid. And probably since my two transplants in you know, 20 years, I've maybe had three really bad bouts of dehydration, even though I thought yeah. I was drinking enough. Like if you just have a slippage for like, you know, a day and you're like, yeah, I'm not drinking enough. It can happen. So like you have to really hydrate. Yeah. Oh, of course. Time. Yeah. So then the second, yeah, I find, uh, go ahead, Holly, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted. No, you. I was just going to say, I find that as, as if I'm not hydrated, I find that I cramp mm. my legs, my, my calves, my, even my toes, everything just cramps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as you know, that can end, that can end whatever activity you're doing until you can hydrate and get back up. <laughs> yeah. It can, it can put you flat in your back for a couple of days for sure. It's pretty bad. Totally. Totally. So then the, the, when I saw your tips come through, number two was actually the most interesting to me because you talk about mental awareness and visualize yeah. events. So can you talk about both of those? Because they, they both seem really fascinating. What do you mean by them? Um, for me, this was, this was uh, especially the mental awareness part and visualizing. Um, that has helped me as I've gotten older and as my body has started to slow down a little bit. 
You know, I have to mentally prepare for even just on my weekends when I play with my friends. You know, some days you can go out and just play horribly and say, well, it's just not a good day. Um, and I find that if I prepare myself, hey, this is this is my sport. This is what I love. I prepare for it. Um, and you just kind of go from there, you know, and with the transplant games, it's the same thing. You know, you get nervous. You're you know, even though you play whatever sport you've got, you do it, you ride, you run you do it all the time, you're still gonna be nervous. You're still in a competition setting. Mm. And so I always try to take a little bit of time by myself yeah. and just visualize it. I know what I need to do. I know what I've done numerous times. And then I just go try to do it. Oh. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so I, the way I kind of am listening to this is that the awareness is like the trigger for the visualization. You can't get to visualization if you're not kind of aware that okay, today I'm going to work out again, or I'm going to have a comp competition. I kind of know what it's about. I know I get nervous. Right. I know that there's good and bad days, no matter what. And then that, that kind of triggers your visualization. Right. Do you have any visualization tricks you want to share with people that like, do you do you, the night before or like, what do you have like a, a visualiz visual, um, a visualization routine that you have? Um, no, normally I, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, have their they're visualizing their boards and, and whatnot. For me, it's just kind of like a moment of just picturing myself, what I've done in the past. Um, if I'm doing, you know, especially with beach volleyball or even indoor volleyball, I know that's my passion. Um, and I know there's good days and there's bad days. So yeah. I'm just going to kind of visualize the good days <laughs> and, you know, kind of just make that, you know, obviously my goal to have another good day especially during competition, stuff like that. You know, it's always fun to look back, you know, especially our last gold medal. You know, we finished it, you know, well after midnight <laughs> in 2019. No, yeah, 2019 in Utah, 18 in Utah. 19, yeah. 19, I can't remember. 18. Um, You're right, 18, gosh. 18, yeah. And that was a long, long day. You know, we started early and we finished after midnight. And so I, I definitely focus on that and how hard that was and how challenging that was because we were so tired. Mm -hmm. But that helps sometimes with, you know, especially if I'm tired or whatever, you know, it's nice to visualize prior events and, and stuff to kind of keep you going. Yeah, you know, what I do sometimes the night before competition is I, to put myself to sleep because it's actually hard to sleep the night before competition. I actually uh, start right. visualizing, okay, I'm going to wake up at this time and then I would do this step. And I start visualizing the entire day and and yeah. usually after five minutes of that i fall asleep <laughs> so the visualization for me the <laughs> night before competition actually helps me fall asleep because otherwise my yeah. mind is going in too many directions so i really like exactly the practice of visualization so tip yeah. number three you have here is stretch and warm up so why i mean this one seems obvious but why for you is this one so important holly um for me it's Obviously, once again, as my body gets older, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't need to stretch as much as I do now. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, I don't necessarily stretch as much or warming up. You kind of just go and you start playing. But that that's what leads to injuries, you know, and the last thing you want is an injury, especially from doing something stupid, not like warming up um, and stretching. So it's kind of the basics. What's what everybody does before anything, whether you're a professional athlete or just going out for fun. You just mm -hmm. need to be careful and and prepare yourself, I guess, stretch your bodies. Totally, totally. Thank you. Thanks for that. So the number four, you have practice, practice, practice. Now, is this like some obsession you have? Or why do you say <laughs> practice, practice, practice? Um, it just, you know, for me, I had the games in mind as far as, you know, competition wise. And obviously, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. You know, again, people still have, they have good days, they have bad days, but you still need to practice. You still need to get out there and you need to do your drills. You need to warm up, you know, a runner, you know, so a sprinter is not going to go out and just go run a hundred for the first time. They're going to practice. They're going to do a lot of drills. They're going to do a lot of speed drills and so forth. Just like with marathons, you know, you have to train. You can't just go out and decide you're going to run 26 miles, you know, unless you're a child. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you know, so I think, I think practicing is key mm -hmm. in order to just keep, you know, keep up the skill level. Yeah. You know, I know when I practice and train really well before an event, you know, you have all this nervousness that always comes no matter how much you've practiced. Yes. And there's a lot of random things that come up during events, like just 
you know, you're, you're late because of, you know, a bus, you know, a bus accident on a freeway or, you know, something and you're late. Like there are things happening. Exactly. But the second, maybe like five to 15 seconds after your event starts, all of that practice suddenly kicks in and then it becomes, it's just so familiar. So practice to me yeah. makes everything so familiar and that familiarity is what can make you, you know, do really well in your competition or not. So I, the practice is really, really important. Yeah, I agree. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. And then the fifth thing you list here, Holly, is sleep and enjoy yourself. Now, a few people have said sleep and other people have said enjoy yourself. So why enjoy yourself? Why, why did you list this as a tip for you, for, for everyone? Um, well, I think you have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to enjoy your sport regardless of what it is. Um, because if it's, if it be, unless, you know, unless you're being paid a lot of money, <laughs> but even that, you know, you should enjoy what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reason you decide to, you know, become a runner or, you know, whatever, even if it's field events or volleyball or tennis or any kind of sport, you have to enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's definitely like, I know I get competitive and sometimes my face oh. doesn't show that I'm enjoying myself, but I really am. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the sport. I love, you know, I love volleyball. I love being outside. You know, it's all about enjoying it, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're not having fun, then, then obviously you need to move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So I, I can speak from personal experience. Holly is extremely competitive. I am too. And I think she goes up <laughs> another level or two, especially in her sport, <laughs> volleyball, uh, but she's awesome. So Holly, thank you so much for sharing your, your tips today. This is just great. It's always fun to see you. So for everyone else, thank you so much um, for audience members. Uh, if you're interested in more of these uh, tips and podcasts and so forth, you can always go to facebook.com, World Transplant Athletes, instagram.com, World Transplant Athletes. And now you can look up on YouTube with over 50 podcasts. Now that means there's probably about 15 podcasts in English and I have subtitles in multiple other languages now. So find your language. And if you can't find it, I'll probably be able to find it for you. So just email me directly if you want a particular podcast with a different subtitle. So World Transplant Athletes, tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime. And of course, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. Holly, thank you. Great. Thank you, Zach. Thank you.